All right. So this is my e-paper clock. So, um, it's uh, actually made out of a 3D printed um, kind of a wood fiber uh, PLA type uh, print material. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're using um, uh, NTP client uh, to connect and get the current time. We're using open weather map to get the current outside weather. Um, we are also using a service to fetch a random quote uh, every day. We refresh the quote and uh, from the inside, there's the redraw. So now it's 154. Um, and then on the inside here, we have a um, uh, sort of the brains of it. There's this ESP32 feather uh, from Adafruit. And, uh, or that you can get on Adafruit. Um, and then we have over here on this board, and of course that's the e-paper from Waveshare back there. Um, and then here we have a tiny, or an itsy bitsy M4, uh, which is responsible for driving the, uh, what's on the display. Uh, we use serial communications between the um, feather over here. We use a serial to tell the itsy bitsy, hey, this is what I want you to display on the screen. Uh, found that I needed to do that because one of the features of this clock is that you connect to it over Bluetooth, but then it's also connected to Wi-Fi. And I was running into issues with running out of memory on the ESP32 when I tried to do all of that plus output to the screen to display. Uh, so to work around that, added another microcontroller, transferred the display logic over and used serial uh, RX and TX to send transmission data over here. Now there's also a, um, a, uh, was a DF robot uh, MP3 player uh, microcontroller, I guess, uh, here. Um, we use these nice little um, boost controllers. This is to make sure that even though the primary source of power is coming into the feather, uh, which is putting out three volts on its rails, we can then up that to five volts for the MP3 player and for the itsy bitsy. Um, and then we have this jumbo capacitor over here so that when it's time to play our alarm clock, you know, when the alarm music plays, there's gonna be a spike in voltage. So just attached a nice beefy um, capacitor back there in this guy here. Uh, now the, couple of things that I wanted to make sure was built into the design. Um, all the components, major components, so you know you can pop the itsy bitsy out of here, you can pop the mp3 player, you can pop these off, they're all just you know soldered in but not uh, attached to the breadboard but through a pin block. Um, I think that's what that's called. And then over here we have this kind of thing adapter attached to the top of the feather. Um, I did end up gluing the display in Although in a future model, 3D model, I'd probably print um, a place for the uh, this to be screwed in so that it doesn't require any glue. Um, but I figured glue was fine for the for the display for now, um, since there's really no reason for that to ever have to come out. Um, but if it has to come out, you can break the glue off and swap out the display. Um, ended up using the uh, the pin plugs over here for the display. That way I don't have to bump wires out the side. The case can be smoother, or smoother. Um, sort of a design feature, although I don't know if it printed all that nicely, uh, was to put kind of a grid over the, or grill, I guess, over the uh, speaker. Um, and interestingly, there seems, to, these look like scratches, but they're actually patterns in the uh, wood filament which is kind of interesting. So that's the uh, e-paper alarm clock. 
Um, I guess I also um, have over here a web app that I put together that you can use to connect to it. Now this is a web app, but it's just uh, connecting over Bluetooth. So it pairs with the device, comes back with all the um, keys here, and then you can specify when you want your alarm to go off. And the alarm logic is such that um, it'll fire within a, you know, even if it's two minutes after when you set the alarm, uh, it'll, it'll fire. So if I do that, it's gonna trigger, uh, in this case, uh, the Beatles. Here comes the sun. So yeah, and then uh, if you wanna stop that, you just click the button on the side, uh, which tells it to stop playing the alarm. So that's the, uh, that's the alarm clock. Uh, yeah. Now oh, I did also have to have a couple of iterations of this box right now. This is, um, I had to modify the 3D print a little bit more than I'd like to, to make a good enough space for the uh, uh, 3D, uh, for the USB cable. But yeah, that's it.